In California's Napa Valley, in the fall of 2006, I began to research and write my book, The Indifferent Stars Above, The Harrowing Saga of a Donner Party Bride, at the gravesite of my great uncle, George W. Tucker. 163 years ago, my great uncle, only 15 at the time, shared a perilous journey with a young bride, Sarah Grace Fosdick. He was my personal connection to her story, so I began my work by honoring his bones. From California, I flew east to the village where Sarah grew up in the Illinois River Valley. I thought of her family leaving their yard here with three ox-drawn wagons. She was only 21 when she left in April of 1846. She had just married Jay Fosdick, and together they decided to follow her family to California, like so many other immigrants that year, in search of new opportunities. I began to follow Sarah's footsteps west, both by car and on foot. Moving through the prairie grass in Kansas, it was easy to imagine she had been in high spirits at the beginning of her journey. But as I traveled farther west into Nebraska, the country grew rougher and drier. Just west of Fort Laramie, I climbed a dusty hill and found wagon ruts left by Sarah and the other parties who struggled over these same dry hills in the crackling July heat. I drove into Utah's Wasatch Mountains, winding up the very canyons where Sarah and her family made the fateful decision to join a group of immigrants who called themselves the Donner Party. Beyond the Wasatch, I hiked out onto the salt flats, an utterly brutal environment where I could almost see Sarah trudging for days across the white plain, sun blind, her lips cracked, and her throat parched. In Nevada, I visited the boiling hot sulfur springs where Sarah tried to slake her thirst. I climbed into the Sierra Nevada mountains on the same trail Sarah had taken to the place where she had first seen signs of snow, delicate flakes at first, then a blizzard. When I arrived at what is now known as Donner Lake, where the party was stopped by the blizzard, it was hard to reconcile this gorgeous place, made even more beautiful by the day's sunshine, with the harsh elements of a century and a half ago, elements that made it a place of almost indescribable horror. Close by, I found the site where Sarah's father erected a cabin in which he hoped his family could survive the winter. For decades, it was marked with a solitary wooden cross. Now the interstate highway covers it. I wound my way up the steep grade of old Highway 40 to Donner Pass. Near the summit, I got out of my car and floundered in drifts, trying to make it up the last slope where Sarah and 14 others had attempted a desperate escape on homemade snowshoes. Finally, I descended the western flank of the Sierra and arrived at a stream where I could not continue without jeopardizing my own safe return to my wife and daughters. I had arrived at the very spot where Sarah and her companions on snowshoes made a fateful and catastrophic mistake following the stream downhill into the deep, deadly fissure of the American River Canyon. In that canyon beyond in the weeks that followed, starving, wearing only rags, her frozen feet bleeding, Sarah plunged ever deeper into a living nightmare, with no choice but to keep moving forward, walking forth bravely under the indifferent stars. To me, Sarah was a hero. She endured what seemed unendurable, and for that very reason I followed her and wrote this book so that you too might gaze with compassion and understanding on this extraordinary young woman and all that the world once was to her.